and uh, welcome to the Form Factor booth at your P Microwave in 2019. Uh, my name is Anthony Lord, I'm the RF Market Segment Director. And today we're going to be talking about some new technologies we have for maximizing productivity and getting the best possible accurate when testing on wafer semiconductor devices. Before we start talking about that, let's just talk a little bit about what is driving the RF semiconductor market. Uh, so obviously things are going higher in frequency. There's things like 5G mobile communications, uh, there's automotive radar at 77 gigahertz, um, there's vehicle to everything communications, and also things like uh, the next generation Wi-Fi standards. These are all using higher and higher frequencies. Okay, so that's a bit more challenging now to first uh, make, manufacture, and test high frequency semiconductors. There's a a number of problems associated going higher in frequency. Uh, first, it's more difficult to make accurate calibrations and measurements at high frequencies, and also we want to have more throughput, so measure more devices. So first, coming on to why we want to measure more devices, well, uh, IC designers who are taking the process design kits and making the ICs, they want to have the best possible models of those transistors, inductors, and interconnects. And the way, one way you can get better models of those packages is uh, by um, measuring more devices. The more devices we can measure, the better the statistical fit you'll get, and therefore the better quality of model, faster time to market for the IC. In terms of the measurement challenges at these high frequencies, uh, there is a lot more challenges. Firstly, there's keeping the insertion loss as much short as uh, little as possible, uh, because the less insertion loss, you get more directivity, more dynamic range, and the system will tend to drift less with less insertion loss. Um, you have to imagine that these high frequencies, let's say up to 330 gigahertz, where a lot of devices now have FTs as high as that, at 330 gigahertz, uh, one micron of expansion or one micron of pro placement error equals one degree of error uh, when looking on this MIF chart. So there is a, a large amount of error with a very small movement of the probe or the waveguide or the cable. So it's very important to keep the measurement channel as short as possible. Uh, also, um, when coming to doing the calibrations, uh, if you're measuring calibrations just a few gigahertz, it's not particularly challenging. There's lots of room for error. And, and generally, most engineers can do calibrations without that much experience. When you start to go to like 110 gigahertz, or in this case, 330 gigahertz, it's a lot more difficult for an engineer to make calibrations. And so therefore, it's better to have a bit more automation in the system to allow you to do automatic calibrations. And that takes away some of the pro placement error associated with the manual calibrations done by an engineer. So to overcome all those challenges, what we are showing here today is our new Summit 200 probe station. This is either a semi-automatic or fully automatic probe station. So the stage inside will move uh, the wafer from die to die. It'll also do automatic calibrations. And with a fully automatic probe station, uh, what we have here is a robot for loading and unloading wafers. So we really can leave, you know, put 50 wafers on here. We can leave it running overnight, over the weekend, and testing all the wafers all automatically. Everything's taken care of by the probe station and the software. In terms of the measurement, this is where all the measurements happen in around this area here. And it's really a true combination of form factor and our partners such as Keysight Technologies, uh, Virginia Diodes and the T-Way probe, bringing all those together to allow for a truly integrated calibration and measurement up to very high frequencies. Um, as you can see here, what we have is the uh, Virginia Diodes frequency extenders. These ones go to 330 gigahertz. And then inside the measurement changer here, which is fully frost-free, so you don't go down cold in temperature, it's EMI shielded, and it's also dark. Uh, it, the measurement goes inside here with a very short measurement channel and connects to the probes, and the probes transition down to a set of coplanar tips, which can probe onto our RF semiconductors. Now, it's really important to be able to do automated calibrations at these frequencies. First, because of the probe placement accuracy needs to be dead on accurate. Uh, but also, you always, if you want to leave the system running overnight or over the weekend, you need to make sure it's not drifted. And any way to do that is to have the system automatically monitor the calibration accuracy to make sure it's not drifted. And if it has drifted beyond a certain uh, percentage, for example, uh, then it'll automatically go off, recalibrate on the components which we're using for calibrating, and then come back to the device it was testing, and then carry on testing. So literally, you can run, leave this running overnight, over the weekend, and you're always 100% certain it's going to be within uh, a certain percentage of drift and a certain percentage of accuracy, because if it's not, it goes off and recalibrates. So you're 100% sure that all your devices were tested with a good calibration, and the data 
was good and accurate. There's never any uncertainty about that. Uh, also, will it run in all autonomously? It means we can change temperature, so you can test all the devices at one temperature, change temperature automatically using the scripting software, and then once it's transition temperature, the system will automatically know it's smart enough to go off and recalibrate to that new temperature, which is very important because everything's changed in size after you've changed the temperature. Then it'll come back and start the testing and test all those devices at that temperature, then move on to the next temperature and the next temperature and so on. And this can be left fully autonomously hands-free calibration with no operator intervention. And so by putting all that together, you really do get a truly autonomous system which allows you to do 24-7 testing, so you're maximizing the number of devices you can measure in any one period of time. Uh, and also you're absolutely certain on the performance and accuracy of the calibration. And those two things, the throughput and the accuracy of the measurement, ensures that you get the, the, the most accurate device models, faster time to market for the ICs, and basically the better quality of measurements overall. So if this is something which interests you, it's the, uh, the Summit 200 probe station with the new autonomous RF measurement capability. Uh, we connected it with a Keysight network analyzer over here, the Virginia diode uh, frequency multipliers, and then we can use either the Infinity waveguide probes or the T-Wave waveguide probes to transition in down onto our DUT. This capability is available in all frequencies, uh, 120 gigahertz, 220 gigahertz, 320 gigahertz, and in the future, higher than that in frequency as well. Um, and it will give you full capability needed for measuring all your wafers. This is the 200 millimeter probe station, but it's also available on our 300 millimeter probe stations as well, so you can measure larger wafers than what we're showing today. Uh, so that concludes about everything we're looking at today. Uh, so thank you for your time and uh, it's been my pleasure.